uh, Pretoria. Good evening, Prof. Uh, thanks evening. very much uh, for uh, your time. Now, you're saying that uh, you found this strain, uh, um, uh, uh, in particular from uh, informal uh, um, shops as well as uh, rural areas. How dangerous is it? And do you know if anyone has died from um, eating this food? Okay, can I just explain? Um, this um, listeria um, is present. It's a different strain, but there is several other strains. So this is very important. There's no link with any outbreaks. So it's not a clinical isolate. It's an isolate from uh, the polony itself. We have um, several other isolates. That's from the environment, from processing plants. Um, if you look at the official results from Department of Health, 91% of the clinical isolates were categorized as ST6. Um, but we do have another 9% that's um, different sequence types. And I think that's the issue. These are not necessary uh, outbreak strains, and that's very important. But how that dangerous that's... are they, Prof? Um, well, it's, it's salmonella, and it's not linked to the outbreaks at the current outbreak, but we, um, and as the minister said, we will always have low levels of listeria present in the environment. Um, listeria um, is present in, in the water, the soil, uh, and and uh, fresh produce and um, and processed meat. So um, it's almost impossible to totally eliminate it from the whole food system. And therefore, it's important to know where, where, what's the source, what's the region, and uh, we need to do epidemiological studies. And we need to link the scientists and the different laboratories. Uh, but, Prof, can this strain kill somebody or make them very sick? Um, this specific strain, and it's not one, there's actually a few that, that's been isolated. Uh, that's not necessarily the uh, outbreak strain. And um, there's no evidence that this one has been linked to any clinical uh, cases, so no, uh, not linked to a direct outbreak. It's just another specific listeria um, uh, sequence type that we found. But it's important that we understand what is happening um, in the whole population. But what's the worst it can do, Prof? Well, for an immunocompromised person, um, if you do get uh, a listeria mono and uh, in in high concentrations, it could be it could affect your health. Um, and um, there's different sequence types, and there's also different listeria species. So it's not only monocytogenous that's been associated with um, a disease outbreaks. Um, so I think it's important that we understand the whole species, the whole family of, of uh, foodborne pathogens. And it's not only listeria, it's also salmonella and E. coli, and there's a whole range of them. And they all play a part in, in public health. What can people do to avoid it, um, Prof? Um, I think everyone's got a responsibility. If you purchase food, uh, you consume food, you prepare food, you must make sure that you follow proper hygiene practices. Um, you know, do not, you have to maintain food at the proper temperature, consume it within the required time. Um, and um, the surfaces where you prepare your food must always be clean. Uh, the water you use must be potable and, and clean. And it's very difficult in the informal sector because people don't have fridges. They don't have access to clean water. Um, so that's the major challenge in our country. And that's why we say there's food going through the system and falling through the cracks. We cannot inspect everything. So your formal sector has removed food that we know has been tainted, that's affected by the specific outbreak strain. We know our processing plants have been able to clean up um, and we cannot detect it in those processing plants, um, but we haven't been able to look at the whole food system. So you find little um, shops in rural areas they may, that may still contain uh, food products that may be affected, and we're talking about cold meats. Thanks very much for your time, uh, Prof. Professor Lise Costen from the University of uh, Pretoria.